Hello, my ravenous readers. It's Uncle Sean here. Welcome back to Kelly Street. Another week is over, but that brings us that much closer to this week's read aloud. Week by week, this channel has been continuing to grow. And if you want to help us keep growing, you can like today's video, subscribe to Kelly Street Productions, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss any of our upcoming read alouds. Today, we're going to be diving into If You Come to Earth, an amazing picture book written and illustrated by award-winning author and illustrator Sophie Blackall. Sophie Blackall has managed to do something absolutely incredible. She's been able to fit the whole world between the covers of this book and helps us answer one of life's big questions, how would you describe the world to an alien from outer space? This book was inspired by the thousands of children the author has met during her travels around the world, lending support to groups like UNICEF and Save the Children, who work to help people and children in need all around the world. So we're about to meet our narrator, Quinn, the child in the red gnome hat, who, if you keep your eyes open, you'll be seeing quite a bit as we read through this book. And from there, we'll go on an adventure that begins in a bedroom, takes us all around the world and back again. That sounds like a lot of ground to cover, so we better get started. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's read. Dear visitor from outer space, if you come to Earth, here's what you need to know. You can find us near a big sun and a tiny moon and a bunch of other planets. Ours is the greeny blue one. The green and brown bits are land and the blue stuff is water. People mostly live on the land, in big cities and small towns and tiny villages, or just in the middle of nowhere. We live in all kinds of homes. in all kinds of families. There are more than 7 billion people on Earth. We all have bodies, but every body is different. Except for my friends who are identical twins and look the same. Except for Mustafa's mole. Inside our heads, we are usually thinking. You can't see our thoughts, but sometimes we show our feelings on our faces. Even if we don't feel like it, we get dressed every day. We wear different clothes depending on what we do and where we live and if it's hot or cold. There's lots of different weather in the world. Some of it's good, and some of it's bad. Wherever people live, we usually have to go someplace else. There are lots of ways to get there. I'm a kid, and kids go to school to learn stuff. So we'll know what to do when we're grown up. Grown-ups do lots of things to make the world work. But when people are not at work or at school or sick or asleep, we get to do whatever we want. 
Whatever we are doing, we need to eat when we are hungry. Some of us have more food than others. We all need food and water to survive. We get water from the rain, which flows into little streams and big rivers and all the way to the sea. You can't drink the sea because it's too salty. The sea looks empty, but actually it's full. Fish can swim, but they can't walk. Most animals can walk or swim or gallop or hop, but they can't fly. Some birds can swim and walk and fly. So if I had to choose, I'd be a bird. Birds can sing. So can whales. And people. People make all kinds of music, on our own, and all together. Some of us who are deaf talk with our hands and faces. Some of us who are blind read with our fingers. If we are blind, we can imagine colors as shapes and sounds. These are the colors you need to paint everything in the world. Some things are part of nature. Some things are made by people. Some things are big. Some are small. Some things are invisible. Wind, invisible cloak, ghosts, gravity, electricity, the smell of roast chicken, old socks, frangipani, wet wool, sound waves. Germs. Some germs can make you sick. So can eating a woolly milk cap toadstool, or breathing in smoke, or getting spat on by a slow loris. Sometimes people get hurt by accident. Sometimes we hurt each other. It's better when we help each other. Babies are not very good at anything. Kids are good at lots of things. Grown-ups can do just about anything until they are really, really old. But by then, the babies are grown up and can help. Older people are good at telling stories about the world when they were young. Kids are good at making up stories that haven't happened yet. There are lots of things we don't know. We don't know where we were before we were born, or where we go when we die. But right this minute, we are here together on this beautiful planet. If you come to Earth, you can stay in my room. Love, Quinn. P.S. How many eyes do you have? Are you small or big? Do you have any pets? When is your birthday? Is it always dark where you are? Are you going to visit us? My friends and I want to know. Well, that was If You Come to Earth 
written and illustrated by Sophie Blackall. And this book can definitely make the reader feel good about their place on this planet, no matter who they are. This book is a celebration of all the things that makes our planet unique, fascinating, and worth visiting. And books like this can help us reflect on all the different ways that people can live and dress, speak, and be on this planet. There's a place for all of us on this planet, and when we embrace diversity, we see all of those little differences as a source of strength. Embracing diversity leads to us being able to develop better and stronger relationships with our friends and our neighbors, encourages us to think and act with empathy for others, and gives us deeper insights and understanding into the world that we all share. Another great thing about this book is how detailed the illustrations are and how much there is to look at and explore. Careful readers can go back through the pages and find all sorts of interesting things you might have missed during your first read through. You should pour over the illustrations and see if you can spot something new. If you enjoyed today's reading, click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, that's something you can do that really helps out the channel. Also, hit the bell icon so YouTube can notify you the next time a video is released. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode. But remember, there are many little ways to enlarge your world. Love of books is the best of all. If you've made it this far into our video, you should stick around all the way to the end. We always put something special at the end right after we play the Kelly sign. See you then. Well, look who's still here. Well, if you stuck around to the end of the video, then you definitely have time for a joke. Well, today's book was all about how we would explain our world to an alien from outer space. So how about an alien joke? You ready? How do aliens organize a space party? They plan it. Get it? <laughs> See you next time.